This is an interesting twist. It's a new style of LED floodlight, and this one is supposedly rated 50 watts, but it's really flat. It's only literally about uh, 25 millimeters or an inch thick. So let me uh, pull this out. It came through the uh, post pre-mutilated, and the first thing I should test with this is actually whether it's uh, steel or aluminium. The magnet is not sticking, it all seems to be an al oh, the, the bracket for the wall mounting is steel, but the rest of it appears to be an alloy, so uh, it's not magnetic. The front of it has the, well, there is no reflector. It really is basically, it looks like a cob chip. Um, presumably there's no, the, it's a driverless chip, the one that is the driver on board. Um, and then it's basically a, a lens over the top of that. It's very thin. Look how thin it is, that's ridiculous. It's super flat and the construction appears to be in two sections. It's got the front section and then this, uh, this uh, rectangular plate at the back. I wonder if this is just extra heat dissipation. I'm guessing it is because if this is actually 50 watts then uh, it will need that extra dissipation. And the picture on the box claims, well it shows it all dripping with water but looking at that now I can... the Gland at the back here, I'm not overly convinced that's going to be waterproof, if that's just a sort of grommet that's been pushed into the metal. But the front does look like it's got a sort of o-ring seal around it. So let's uh, start by doing obvious tests. Let's check to see if it's earthed. The size, just see, although I suppose ultimately it is super flat, um, and that's the main thing, it makes it look different, but the size doesn't seem to... Oh, it's earth, that's nice. The size just seems small for 50 watt when you're used to another, you know, the typical 50 watt style. Let me see, hold on, I've got another 50 watt here. I've got a 50 watt here for comparison and it's huge and it's got the box in the back. It's just enormous because it's got the electronic ballast in the back. The driver. So uh, now I've uh, checked that that's earth, let's plug it in, let's bring in the hockey meter the flickery hoppy meter because of its low pulse of, uh, pulse of modulation. There we go again. Uh, it's a uh, multiplexing speed. Um, and I'll also bring in the cliff quick test so we can connect into this easily. Because this uh, thing has the little... Oh, actually, no, no I can't because I'm not going to earth. Because this is this little uh, set of connections for live connections with speaker terminals, nice. Uh, I have to put this death adapter in just to get the spacing. That's why I use that when I'm plugging this in. So let's hook it up and see what its power rating is. What do you reckon? Is it going to be 50 watts or is it going to be 5 or 20 or some random value? So in goes the earth. Make sure I get them the right way. That would be unpleasant if I didn't. Uh, in goes the neutral and in goes the live. Let there be an explosion. Oh, you know what? I'm pretty sure I ordered the warm wipe. I could be wrong. Visible flicker from that light. Feel the heat coming off the front of that. Uh, 52 watts. Now, I wonder if this is going to be one of the ones, the driverless chips that... Uh, driverless LEDs. Well, they say driverless LEDs. It's got a driver on the board that will self-regulate with temperature. I may leave that running for a while and actually see what happens. The power factor is 0.9, which is very good. That kind of alludes to just series arrays of LEDs. And it might be the type of light that switches. Uh, there's two types of approach they use here. One is to have all the LEDs in series, and the chip in series act actually acts as a sort of like, almost like a variable current sensing resistor. And the other approach is to switch them in in groups to ride the sine waves so that as the forward voltage of the first group reaches and it starts coming up to intensity, when it reaches a certain threshold, it switches the next group in and it makes it a longer string of LEDs and it means that it's lit for a longer period in the sine wave. So it's, it's met its uh, 50 watt rating, that's pretty impressive. It, you could feel the heat radiating, radiating from the front, I wonder how hot that's going to get. I'm almost inclined to say that was such a small flat case, it, I'd only rate it at 20 watts dissipation, but you just never know. I'm going to have to try that. I'm noticing these are hex, so I'm going to have to bring in my more diverse screwdriver kit. Let's uh, have a wee wild guess at this one. Missed. What about the next size up? Oh, that's better.
Another thing that's uh, slightly perplexing here is that the fact that the flex seems to come up pretty close under the LED. Oh, I have to make a note of that. There's a little plastic, clear plastic washer underneath the screw that holds it's probably to stop it cracking the plastic lens. I say lens, it's not really a lens. Oh, that one's not got one. Or unless it was underneath. Oh, that's odd. I'll find out. I'll take more out. It is very neat because it's so flat. It also makes it... Ah, the washer's underneath. It's a packer for the uh, spacing of the... Uh, the ceiling o-ring. If it is... Oh, it's actually it's not an o-ring as such. It's a... It's a rubber thing. Oh, look at that. That's weird. So... This is using, it's got, uh, the mains come in, it goes through a metal oxide varistor for the snubbing the transients to protect the chip. It's got a bridge rectifier feeding over to this circuitry, which, can I read the number on that? Uh, hold on till I get a visual enhancement on. It's kind of covered in a gel, which just makes that a little bit harder to see. I should put those little washers to the side before I lose them. I'm quite perplexed at the way the cable's here. Do you know, they've sat this onto a piece of aluminium and the cables that is coming right up the back of that and then folding over, that doesn't look like a very good design. The earth wire comes over to the side here and it's screwed onto that uh, position there. Okay, it really does look like it's crushing the cable. I shall explore that further though. Oh, it looks like uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to scrape that off. But so far, it looks like an SM style chip that does switch the LEDs in sections. But then again, I'm looking across the circuit board here, and I am only seeing one track coming into the LEDs and one track going out. So I get the feeling they're all in series in there. And what's this? What is this component here? Uh, right, I'm going to have to explore this a little bit more. I'll be back in a moment. Oh, well, that's annoying. The investigation skidded to a halt at this integrated circuit here because that integrated circuit is called... STM18C24AD and typing that into Google brings up absolutely nothing. Not even some random mystery link with, you know, the same combinations of letters and numbers. Nothing. Absolutely zilch. That's kind of rare, actually. I was thinking, has something gone wrong here? Because nothing came up on the screen. But uh, that's disappointing. All I can deduce here is that this uh, transistor must be, well this transistor is limited to the current, I know this because I've done some thermal tests. Oh you know what, before we take this any further to bits, let's take a look at what's uh, inside and the thermal pictures. So I'll put that on the floor. Here is the circuit board. Now I was originally thinking that the chip in this was going to be a typical um, driverless chip, which, well, they say driverless chip, it's got the driver on board. And this type here has this array of LEDs, and it's got, like, one base chip that uh, passes enough current for about 10 watts worth of power dissipation. And then it's got another chip in this case, because this is a 20-watt LED, so it's got two of these chips and the positions for three more, so it goes up to 50 watts. But in this case, it appears that this chip is controlling a transistor, and the transistor, presumably because it's got a larger heat sink area, is dissipating all the power of, and it's controlling the current through the LEDs. The LEDs are wired in pairs. There's uh, 12 by 12, so it's, uh, is that 244? I think that is 244 or thereabout LEDs. But they're wired in pairs. I I'm now going to have to do the maths on that. I'll bring in the big calculator. I'll blow the dust off the big calculator. So big calculator is in shot. Um, 12 times 12 equals 144 LEDs. Uh, if you multiplied them times 3 volts per LED typically, it would come to about 432 volts, which is actually too high 
for the sort of uh, mains voltage. It's the, even the peak mains voltage isn't going to reach that. So divided by two gives a more manageable 216 volts on our 220 to 240 volt supply. So I'm uh, deducing that they're wired in parallel, and certainly this track, this visible track coming on, splays out to join onto the end of these two LEDs. And this end, if you follow them through, there's a sort of a pair and then a link, and then between each set of uh, two rows of LEDs that are coming together, there's a returning link, so it then zigzags down the next set, returns and zigzags down the next set, so it's all got those uh, parallel pairs all wired in series to make up the set of voltage. And that's what gives it the high power factor, because uh, it is, it's basically, it's just a, a resistive and LED load. It's a very simple circuit. There's no sort of capacitive phase shift or anything like that. It's not going to be perfect sine wave, but it's, it's going to be fairly good. The, where, where the current is being drawn, it's going to be in sync with the voltage. Um, so they've got the mains come in, the metal oxide varistor, the 471 means 470, the one means a zero at the end, so four seven and one zero, which is the sort of voltage that's going to start turning on at. The ten k is a sort of indication of its sort of energy capacity for the um, well, I think it is, or just the range. But it, it's you know depending that number will vary depending on the actual physical size of the unit. We've got the bit rectifier and then a discharge resistor across the output or loading resistor. Perhaps it's just perhaps for stability. Seven five zero three. It all seems to be for digit uh, resistors, which I'm guessing, without measuring it, is 750 and three zeros is 750k. So then one end, I'm guessing it's a positive, goes to the LEDs. I haven't checked that. Uh, and the other end goes to the circuitry. And after going through the LEDs, the track, I thought it was going to go straight to this uh, MOSFET type device, but it seems to actually go up to the top here. Um, and I see pairs of resistors here, 2.2 ohm resistors, a pair. That might be a current sense for controlling this chip, which then drives this. But how does it drive its power? Um, I'm guessing these two capacitors might be in parallel, and they might be a small power supply for that. Without knowing what this chip is, it's very hard to say. The big transistor type device does not have anything uh, marked on it at all. It's just a blank component. Very odd. The thermal images, this is the front of the light, and it came up to about 58 degrees Celsius, actually probably close to 60 in the sort of hot spots around the side. Uh, the, temperature, the temperature monitoring happens within these little, uh, this little box area, so you can zone it in, it will, the cursor will automatically uh, go to the hottest part. The back of the case, it's a bit disturbing, it goes up to about 70 degrees Celsius. And that means that this plastic flex, I mean, I'm pretty sure this flex is just ordinary PVC. Does it have a temperature rating on it? Not that I'd necessarily believe that. It's rubber. HO5RN. That's better. Okay. That's not bad. Right. Uh, it's got the flex coming in the back here through that little gland. And also notice, well, we'll take this completed to bits afterwards, I'll rip this out. Uh, the front of it, the LED, now notice I've only got three fixings and then the cable comes in under here. So they've only used three fixings and you can see that in the back. If you look at this back metal plate, I thought initially that that was actually sort of stuck on in such a way that the actual LED was mounted directly onto this plate. But this is effectively just a secondary heat sink fin and it makes it more rigid. The you could theoretically, the lower power LED, get rid of this back plate completely. It is just seemingly for heat dissipation because it's the aluminium panel with the uh, louvers sort of pressed into it to allow air to circulate around them. And it matches the case itself, that this bit that also has that pattern to allow air to flow in doubt and uh, just increase the cooling effect. But that means that the area without a screw, the Chip has a position for a screw, but it's not used there. And there is a bias in the heat to it towards that side, suggesting that because it's not clamped down at that side, and you can see the screws are actually having a positive effect and, you know, helping take that heat away because they're much cooler. Well, relatively cooler. They are quite cool, actually. That is very much representative of the heat sink temperature. Um, but uh, that one missing there, the, there's a definite bias. And the hottest bit is that. The transistor. The transistor was running at 108 degrees Celsius, which, uh, that's quite hot. 
Um, so it really is the main limiting component. There is a tiny bit of warmth in the, the integrated circuit, but that's probably just... Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I'm not even seeing scent resistors glowing hot here. That's quite odd. I thought the scent resistors might have been warm. But having said that, if it's a very low sense voltage, that wouldn't be such an issue. So the question is, what voltage is it using to drive the... If that is a MOSFET, it usually requires a voltage about 5 to 12 volts to drive the gate. So is it a MOSFET? I'm not really sure. Uh, without, as I say, knowing what that chip is. And I tried various searches for uh, similar chips by searching for component arrangements, and I, I couldn't find it which is odd. Um, again, you know, many of these things, it's such a specialist chip for the lighting industry, they never anticipate it ever being made available to typical Westerners, unfortunately. So they don't put the data out. And it may also be very new, because this is a very new light. It's got the 2017 date, and this is 2017. So let's uh, take more to bits. Let's take these screws out. So I know already that there's a... Um, aluminium plate behind this with that bit cut out it for the cable coming in the cable it just looks so tight in that area so how is this going to come out is it going to come out easily it might not it might be kind of stuck down let's bring the Poundland special screwdriver and try and lever this oh it's moving it's moving it's moving right okay that's not inspiring is it the cable is literally, let's chop that off. Snips. Uh, those aren't snips. Those are long those pliers. Where's my snips? There's my snips. Heat sink compound. Look how dry it is under there. Actually, it's got the clear silicon liquid. But the heat sink compound has not made contact over there at all. That could also be part of the reason why there was that hot spot. So they've got an aluminium plate in the back of this. Um, and, and it's got a cutout. And the cables really are. That space there, the cables are literally just rammed into the case. And then pressed flat by the hot heat sink. I don't like that at all. You can see the cable has been deformed there. And it almost makes me wonder, well, certainly it's not plastic cable. Um... Well, I hope it's not plastic, just masquerading as rubber. But, um, you could see if that was uh, plastic, then there's a risk that the heat could actually melt through that until it's shorted out against the LED plate. So, is there any other grip in that? It's glued. It's uh, There's no cable relief other than the earth wire, and that just... Yeah, that was too easy to release. That's where the water's going to get in. That's not impressive. They've over... over-simplified it here. I think I'd rather the cable had been brought in maybe from the bottom and brought up the way, but having said that, they're probably trying to... Keep in mind, this is just a punched piece of metal. It made sense to actually punch from the top, and that's why they've done it there. Hmm, not so sure about that. And that just leaves this bit. Can these bits come off? This is all covered in... Oh, and, you know, ooh... Yeah, this is a uh, very goopy. Ugh. Another thing they could have done here, they could have used a thicker metal plate, and it would have, uh, but then again, that's a fairly large slab of aluminium. Aluminium. So uh, they might have done it just to save cost. Oh, the, it's, like, it's such a flat piece against the flat surface that it's actually not wanting to come off. I'll slide it off. There it goes. This is making a huge mess. Uh, what about these? These are, they've got these circuit boards of layers that are kind of routed out and then they've glued it on and then used that to fill a reservoir of the sort of like the silicone or the polymer goop. Actually, I can see a slight wick of it underneath, so they may actually. Oh, that's coming off easy enough. Yeah, that came off easy enough. Oh, let's get the other one off as well then. I really should clean my fingers at some point. Let's see if I can stab myself first. Oh, that's a bit crunchier. Yeah, that was a bit crunchier. Oh, there is a wee line of glue. There's a wee line of glue in that, just uh, you can see a wee sort of outline. Uh, so why did the silicon goo creep out of here? 
I'm guessing they just didn't glue it completely and it just seeped underneath. So uh, yeah, time to maybe investigate a bit further, but first I'm, go oh, I'm gonna have to try and find what that chip is. So if you do uh, have a clue what that chip is, then let me know in the description, in the comments, because uh, that's gonna make this tracing this out a lot easier. It's gonna make more sense. I could trace this out, but uh, there's the risk that it's just going to end up a random smatter of components that it doesn't make sense without knowing what's going on inside here. So overall, they've it's quite neat that they've simplified it down to such a flat level, but you know what? Personally, I don't have much confidence in this being reliable. Um, they're selling in the box, they present it as a, available in the sort of the classic hydroponic version with the well, what they call the full spectrum LED, but it's the full spectrum minus green. It's a sort of purpley colour. And you know what? As long as it's in an indoor environment, it might be okay. But um, outdoor, I'm not sure I'd trust it. And I just don't like that uh, cable entrance either. And then, you know, if they're going to use it indoors anyway, then they could have actually just relax things a bit because it doesn't have to be waterproof and they could have actually allowed a more generous area for the cable to come in. But it's interesting, it's interesting how they've uh, gone that route. Another thing, in, in a way I'd almost prefer that it took a standard chip like this. Oh, is that pin out? The actual hole spacing the same? Yes, it is. So theoretically, you could put one of these chips in there, although it still has that problem of uh, this cable coming in. But you could use one of these chips then, theoretically, to replace this one uh, if it failed, because uh, I'm not sure of what the longevity of this is going to be like. But yes... It was interesting to take apart, and now we know what's inside. Rather predictably, even without a number, I decided to try and go all the way. And I found that the chip is kind of similar, but not quite identical to the BP5132H. Now that chip is designed, it's basically got two current regulator sections in it with temperature sensing. And it's the type that's used on these driverless LEDs where they use, uh, in the case of the 20 watt one, they've used two. In the case of the 50 watt one, they use five. They just stack them up in parallel to pass more and more current. But in this case, uh, where this one's got the terminals marked NC, uh, they're linked together and they're connected to an improvised power supply in this based on a couple of resistors and a capacitor just to derive power while effectively the LED is off or well, the voltage across the LED, technically speaking because it is going to uh, have quite a high voltage drop across it. And uh, the chip then drives this large transistor. And by doing that, it means that instead of having like, well, in the case of this 50 watt one of the five chips, they just have one of these chips and a fairly generic, ordinary transistor that's you know probably just available off the shelf quite cheaply. So I think the main driving force here has been economy, and they've just required a little bit of extra circuitry to accommodate that. But uh, the fact remains that this thing is, uh, you know, I have deduced also that whereas this uh, larger circuit board with all the extra circuitry filled that whole space up, I thought, well, I wonder if you could put this one in because it takes up less space. And then I thought, what if you mounted it vertically like that because the whole still fit, the, the LED still fits, and then moved that grommet uh, position if you punched it through here instead so that the uh, cables could be brought in and there was a bit of room to actually fold them over and clamp them down in some way before taking them onto the LED. So um, I'm guessing that it really is just an economy thing. I'm not sure if there's a reliability difference between this type and that. Certainly these ones seem the most common. But uh, I think it's too early to tell if there have been failures of these. If you've had failures of them, uh, let me know uh, in the uh, comments down below because it's always useful to keep tabs on how the LED technology is faring in real life. So yeah, an interesting and stylish light, but the, they've compromised on the space inside a wee bit too much. It's made it just that wee bit, a wee bit too sort of weak cable-wise. But other than that, fairly neat.